Welcome back to the Morning Brew here on CNC3. It is 12 minutes past the hour of 7 o'clock. If you're just joining us, well, the top of the morning to you if you spend the last uh, 30 minutes or so with us. Thank you so much for staying with us. So it's time to continue the discussion and we jump into the political field. He created quite a stir when he announced that he will be returning to the political landscape. Mr. Jack Warner it has thrown his hat in the ring and he's contesting the Lopino Bonner West seat. Mr. Warner joins us now for a brief discussion. Mr. Warner, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. I would like to ask you this. I, I'm sure you've been asked this question many times already, but let's see if we get a different answer this time around. Why now? I am, I am entering the field now because the PNM government has failed the people. I said before, I would say again, that this country is tottering on the brink, that crime levels are very high, out of control, our health system is bad, it's in shambles, our education system needs revamping, our social services remain unreachable, and simply put, in 2015, the government made several promises to this country, none of which it has kept to date. And I believe quite sincerely that if they return to office, it shall even be worse second time around. In 2015, you spoke about the UNC. In 2020, you're speaking about the People's National Movement. Is your return solely to send a message to these political parties? In, 19, in 2015, I spoke about the UNC cabal as distinct from the UNC. I, I, I kept saying again and again that uh, Mrs. Prasad Pisesa had been a victim of the cabal, and that was my beef. In 2020, I, I, I'm, of the, I'm of the firm view that Dr. Rory has failed the country. He has not had the leadership qualities one expected. His arrogance is unsurpassed, and therefore he will do the country no good second time around. If you had to throw your support <coughs> to one of these parties, the UNC yeah. or the PNM, which one would you choose? to be the next government? Well, I would much prefer that my constituents, my party executive, advise me accordingly. I wouldn't want to commit myself at this stage. I think it's premature at this stage, but when I win Lupino Bonnier West seat, I shall go, go to my party executive and to, to, to the constituents and get from them their point of view and act accordingly. If you do in fact win that seat, Lupino Bonnier West, I will win the seat, please. Do you think you could make that much of a difference with just one seat? I am quite sure I will, because a revolution will begin in Lopito Bonaires that shall envelop the whole country. We are the party that, in a real sense, is not committed to big business or to any sectoral interest. And therefore, I believe that we are quite poised to make this change. But what is even more important, it is our belief that elections shall be so close that the winner of Lupino Bonaires can most definitely, definitely decide who forms the government. It's against that background, therefore, that I believe we shall be utterly very, very important. Now, the ILP has been missing in action for quite some time. What was the party up to? The party has, has been very active, has been doing its, its homework on the, on the, on, on the ground, the party has held several meetings, has been meeting members. The party executive has always been very vibrant, but we decided that we would not spend our limited resources in fighting the election throughout the country as against fighting it in one, in one constituency. Do you think that the people of Lopino Bonaire West will vote for you because of your name, Mr. Jack Warner, or because of what you could what you will bring to them? They will vote for me, not for my name only, so that will help, but they will vote for me because I have been living in this constituency for more than 50 years. I know of their concerns, I live among them, I know their fears, I know their anxieties. But more importantly, they know my track record. They know I'm a doer. Therefore, whereas other candidates may tell them what they can do if elected, I can tell them what I have done in Shogunas West and what I will replicate in Lupino Bonaires. 
Now, we've heard a number of allegations over the last few years uh, relating to you, Mr. Warner. Do you yes. see this hindering your chances at all? I don't, because as you have rightly said, there are many allegations, and even the PNM uh, chairman has mentioned that those allegations are simply allegations. In this country, miss, the rule still is that one is innocent until proven guilty. And after seven and a half years, my matter has not, has not even started. But when it does, I can assure you, I shall be proven very, very innocent. Have you tried to reach out to the United National Congress to team up with them? I have not done that. I have some very good friends in the UNC, and from time to time we speak. But we have never spoken about my teaming up with them in any form or fashion. Mr. Wan, I want to ask you, what is your plans for the constituents of Lopino Bonne West? You say well, that I, you've I'm been doing with, groundwork for uh, many years because you are from that area. Yes. Well, I will tell you, the, the, I have a, I have a 20-point plan for this constituency. Like, for example, providing free Wi-Fi access to the constituency, large-scale farming, and so on. But uh, there are four plans I want to discuss with you quickly. I know you have a time constraint. And I tell you, first of all, where the Aruka old police station was and where the old post office was, these buildings are on the brink of collapse. In fact, one has already collapsed. My aim is to use this area, collapse these two buildings, and install here a central market in Aruka where people can go and sell their produce and prevent them from selling at Lobino Junction and creating major traffic um, jams or nightmares, so to speak. My second thing would be to, there are five primary schools in this constituency and one secondary school, and there is not a single library in this constituency. Therefore, my second aim is to create a library here for the young people. My third objective will be there are 500 acres of land on the north of this constituency belonging to the HDC. Those lands have been kept idle for the past 25 plus years. I am saying that those lands must be cut into two acre plots and given to the farmers to plant, to grow food. Because at the end of the day, if, we do, if this country is not self-sufficient in food, we shall die. And therefore, we must begin this revolution in Lopez of West, where we shall be growing food for the constituency and ultimately for the people. The next objective I have in mind is to establish here a fire brigade station. We are living in a community of over 50,000 people when you connect Lopito Bonia West and Aruka Maloney. The nearest gas station here is in Toapuna or Arima. And if by chance they do come, the, 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 the nearest fire station is in Toapuna or, of course, um, Arima. And if I told you there's a fire in this area, God forbid, we shall be in trouble. So a fire station has to be established here that will protect the constituents as the case may be. Of course, there are other things I will do, like establishing homework centers, maintaining, of course, the infrastructure has been maintained, D making sure that, of course, we have daycare centers and nurseries for the children. I shall be, of course, having soup kitchens for the poor, developing sports and cultural clubs across the constituency, and you name it, we shall do it. And I say this to you, Miss, not, not of, you know, these are not mere words, but these are things I will achieve. I want to reiterate, my role has been as an achiever. And the most important thing is I will do all of this for one dollar a month. And you know why? Because I have come to this constituency, as I did in Chocolat's West, I have come to give, not to get. I have come to put, not to take away. In fact, you recall, that I am the only parliamentarian in this country, the only one ever, not to have bought a government vehicle tax-free for five years. I never used that resource to, to, to help to damage myself. And I have no intention of doing it now. My yes. aim is genuine, is to help the poor and dispossessed who have been neglected by this government for decades. Mr. Warner, if you don't win that seat come August 10th, are you willing to cooperate with whoever is elected there? Of course. I mean, the, the problem doesn't change. I shall still help them in Carnival. I shall still help to, uh, to 
uh, ensure that my objectives are carried out by whoever is here. But you will agree with me that the best person to carry out these objectives would be me, Jack Warner. And therefore, all I can do is to ask them to give me their vote and put and make this constituency the best ever in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Water, as you continue your campaigning, can we expect uh, files to be revealed in the coming days? I have no intention of going down that road. Of, of course, there are things that people would do about other candidates and so on, but that is not my function. I have no intention of saying how, how bad anyone is. My grandmother has taught me, uh, and I have now gone back to her lesson, that if you can't say good, don't say bad. And therefore, my role shall be to discuss what I can do for this constituency, to ask the people to have faith in me, and I have no intention whatsoever of denigrating the other candidates, come with me. So are you saying that you're a faster boss, but you just won't do it? <laughs> I just won't do it. Fair enough. All right, okay. Uh, one more question. You've been out of politics for many years. We yes. see a lot of third forces joining the political arena for this, this year's general election. What, what are their chances from where you stand? Well, I think, to answer you candidly, I think it will be a very, very close fight. And this is why I think it will be either 1993 or 2021. Of course, I will be there. So in any case, I shall be playing a pivotal role in whoever is elected to govern this country. Apart from hoping to win Lopino Bonaire West, what yes, can I we... shall win Lopino Bonaire West. What can we look forward to from you, Mr. Warner? Well, you can look in forward terms of to, politics. to me setting the example for, all, for other parliamentarians. My whole life has been one of representation, performance, and action. All these characteristics are, are lacking in today's politicians, who, after they elected, tend to forget their constituents and see them again after every five years. That is not my track record, and I hope that I will be able to use my track record as an example for others to follow and as a catalyst for change toward Trinidad and Tobago. As citizens prepare to go to the polls on August 10th, Mr. Warner, what would be your advice to them, especially those who are still saying they have no intentions of voting? All I would tell them is to vote and vote wisely, because if they don't, and we have a repetition of what happened for the last five years, the next five years shall be most brutal indeed. We shall see an increase in taxes. We shall see the, 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 a situation where more government, um, government institutions shall be sold. We shall see a situation where taxes shall be on the increase, where gas prices shall increase. We shall see all kinds, all manner of things happening, and not to the people's benefit. And this country right now is living, is living on a day-to-day -day situation. People are not, are not surviving anymore. Young people are unemployed, and the list goes on and on, and nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care. And therefore, if they want that to continue, then they have to, have to they will of course, stay home or vote for the same party they did in the past. But if they want change, you have to go out there and vote, and vote wisely. But in, but in Lopino, Chocolate, in Lopino, Bonia West, they have to vote for Jack Warner. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Warner, for joining us here right. on The Morning Brew. Right, thank you for this, for this interview. I appreciate it very much. Take care. Yeah. All right, it's back to a break. More when we come back. Thank <laughs> you.